So, Dr. Oimer, Jazakallah khair for joining us on Double Take. First things first, can you take off your jacket? Because this session is going to be a bit more casual. Okay. <laughs> that was a joke. Oh, perfect, perfect, yes. All right, Jazakallah khair. Uh, question number one. Um, your favorite Qara'a reciter of the Quran? Ah, my favorite reciter. These days, I love Al Manshawi. Um, okay. But my sort of default favorite is Saad Al Ghamdi. MashaAllah. Okay. And it's, it's honestly refreshing that he, he, got a, he got a job at the Haram. Um, I think it's very befitting of someone who has been in most people's homes. Mashallah. Oh my God, he did. Yeah, in Medina. Recently. For. Yeah, the last few years. I don't know about last Ramadan, but the last, the last, um, you know, three or four years, he's. You know, he yeah. was asked to to be at uh, at Haram Haram al Medina, al Madani, uh, for some time ago, but he didn't do that. You know why? Because no, because he had to be close to his parents. Oh, mashallah. So yeah, he, no, he finally he, made it. He, he turned that down a number of times for that reason. I I don't know what happened now. Maybe his parents moved with him, but. Uh, you know, I love that, that, that about him. MashaAllah. Um, okay, that's number one. Number two, um, if you were to have dinner with someone who's passed away, and it obviously can't be the Prophet ﷺ, um, who would you choose from history, a modern or, or ancient, and why? If I could have dinner with someone, I think it would be Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Why Ali and not someone else? Well, for, for one, I love the personality of Ali uh, uh, radiallahu anhu, and I have many questions for him too. Um, you know, if you, I mean, I'm, I'm writing about, uh, about him and about the fitna. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I, of course, he's very eloquent, uh, very wise. Um, he's a warrior. He's a warrior poet. Uh, it's somebody who doesn't have much time for diplomacy, uh, it seems, from his personality. So I have spent so much time trying to understand the personalities of, of the Khulafa Rashid when writing about it. And, and he's the one who strikes me as, you know, I want to confirm whether I'm right about him. Okay, and of course, uh, I mean, in, he's Ali. Uh, I mean, what can you say? Of course. Um, by the way, I have a question about that after this recording. I, like, it's a burning question. Um, okay, um, if you were to have dinner with someone who's alive, who would it be and why? Dinner with somebody who is alive? Gosh, that's a tough one. Maybe Rashid Ghanoushi to tell him that he's misusing the Sahifa? I would rather write about it and have him read. <laughs> um, Sheikh Rashid's uh, nephew, in fact, was uh, went to school with me in Madison, Wisconsin. So we were close in, in a certain sense. Um, so no one comes to mind for dinner? Uh, you know, I mean, there are, there are many people, but the, well, I'll tell you the, 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 the Sheikh that I, um, that I really admire is Salman al Auda, who is in prison and I would love to have him out of prison and have dinner with him. I mean, we love our food on double take. So, uh, we've moved from dinner breakfast. If you were to have your ideal breakfast, no one involved, no one is looking. What breakfast would you be having? Oh, that's an easy one. Uh, Turkish breakfast. And in Turkey, I was visiting once and one of my students took me to this district in Istanbul called Bilat District, which is really, really remarkable. It has very colorful houses, uh, just really amazing. And there uh, we had this this distinctive Turkish breakfast from a particular region that's like these 
you know, 20 different little plates. One has some yogurt, mm. another has, you know, the jam of this thing or that thing. And it's just so luxurious, uh, yet so authentic. Simple. Yeah, and so simple. I could sit and eat all day. I think we did that almost. <laughs> uh, Dr. Awaymer, the last book that you read was? Um, Jonathan Lawrence, Coping with Defeat, Islam and Catholicism. I was just reading it. Um, and it's a story of how over the last two centuries, Islam and Catholicism, Sunni Islam and Catholic Christianity have exchanged places. Uh, in 19th century, Sunni Islam was um, seen vibrant and progressive, accepted modernity, even championing modernity. Uh, whereas Catholicism was reactionary and resisting modernity, and now they have changed places. So that's that's the account, and uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Mashallah. And the, the final question, if I were to say embarrassing masjid moment with Dr. Awaymer, what comes to mind? Embarrassing masjid moment. Oh... Uh, Oh yeah, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I think it happens to everybody. But anyway, when you're starting off, which is when you are correcting an imam, right? When they are reading. I remember one uh, brother who is, mashallah, very good reciter. And um, he was reciting, al, uh, I think, Surat Al-An'am. And I corrected him because in my mind, he was reading Surat Al-A'raf. And he, after Salah, he says Salam, and uh, and uh, he turned to me and he says, "Yes, Akhi, we all know you memorize a lot of Quran." <laughs> and I just that was the most embarrassing moment I can imagine. So now I never correct the Imam. Jazakallah khair, barakallah fiq, and inshallah see you next time on Double Take.